नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर स्पेशल शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू ऑल डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस अबाउट की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टूडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट द रोल ऑफ विमेन इन आर्म्ड फोर्सेज now the raksha mantri rajnath singh has said that government has taken evolutionary path to ensure equal participation of women in armed forces delivering the inaugural address at sco webinar on role of women in armed forces on thursday he said india has taken a number of steps to strengthen the role of women within the security setup in general and the armed forces in particular speaking at the same webinar chief of defense staff general bipin rawat also observed the distinction between the role of men and women in war fighting is blurring indian army air force and navy began inducting women as short service commission officers in 1992 this was the first time when women were allowed to join the military outside medical stream one of the turning points for women in the military came in 2015 when indian air force decided to induct them into the fighter stream in 2020 the supreme court ordered the central government to grant permanent commission to women officers in the army's non combat support units on par with their male counterparts in march 2021 the indian navy deployed four women officers on warships after a gap of 23 years and 2 months later in may 2021 indian army got its first batch of 83 women soldiers in the corps of military police from 2022 women will also be able to join the premier tri service training institute at the national defense academy to try and understand more and in a holistic manner as to where do we stand in terms of inclusion of women in these glorious institutions and what exactly is the role of women in armed forces we joined by a distinguished panel of experts today let me first introduce them to you beginning with we have with us in the studio mr mayank singh senior defense journalist is joining us we are also joined by two more experts uh, uh, retired captain shweta mishra is joining us uh, she is an ex army officer also uh, retired major general ravi arora defense expert is uh, joining us welcome all of you to sunset tv let me uh, begin with you uh, captain mishra and I want to start with you because you've been there you've done that you've been a part of uh, this glorious institution that is Indian Army of course we would want to know about your journey there your experience but also if you look at it from today's perspective and the decisions being taken right now the kind of uh, you know forward movement which has been there in terms of uh, uh, bringing more women into the armed forces uh, how would you uh, analyze the present situation and the way you have seen it uh, during your uh, stint with Indian Army I thank you for having me as the panelist and yes uh, women and girls make up for the half population of the world and certainly they make up for the half of the potential of the world which should be tapped if we if we intend to you know achieve the uh, sustainable development goals as we say by 2030 and uh, i am so glad that uh, india has already taken that giant leap in the year 1992 when they started inducting us uh, uh, women uh, officers in, in in indian defense forces i was uh, lucky uh, to be uh, one of the uh, uh, ladies who served in the in the services i have joined indian army in the year 1995 and i served up till 2002 and my experiences had been diverse Uh, there is so much of debate happening in present day about whether uh, women are capable or not and from my experiences i can tell you right from the uh, from the selection procedures as as i can start uh, where a selection uh, takes place uh, with the written test and uh, the interviews in service selection boards at no point differences are you know uh, assessed whether you are a boy or a girl if it is a service selection board the psychological test the group testing officers the interviewing officers they test you for your potential for your capability to be an officer to take a responsibility in the uh, in the field scenario to take responsibility in war like situations whether you will be able to take on that stress so that is assessed in your uh, service selection board when you are interviewed when you are uh, assessed uh, to to become as an officer so excellent experience i would i would say i had uh, and i would say that my selection procedures were at par with men i am continuously repeating because that is where compar- comparisons keep coming and that is uh, that is the kind of comparisons which are there in media when uh, mm-hmm. people keep saying that this is a very uh, 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 men centric job where women may not be able to perform so from my experiences i have uh, cleared ssb i have uh, i have uh, taken training in officers training academy chennai where is Uh, where all the uh, lady cadets join to take their training okay. and the training is imparted at par with men uh, when we had joined uh, back in 95 uh, th- they were uh, uh, they were still as i can say 
trying out the procedures and uh, uh, the physical standards were being set indeed uh, several experiments uh, were being done right from the from the kind of uniform uh, we wear from the, uh, the 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 way our hairstyles would be to the to the distances we can run indeed. to the kind of exertions we can uh, take so all those were our courses were used to be called women's special entry scheme mm -hmm. so all kind of you know exper experimentations like we say the uh, trials and errors were uh, done to to know where the uh, okay. uh, standards can be set which ultimately got set by the year uh, 2000 uh, 2008 uh, the uh, women officers women's special entry scheme was ended and all short service commissioned women were at par with the short short service uh, commissioned male officers. Male officers. So even the ser service numbers which were provided uh, okay. for us, the service number number provided and the merit list which used to be made was different in our times. Okay. Okay. But Indeed, that's that's a, that's a very very uh, you know uh, wonderful uh, scenario which has been depicted by you uh, late nineties uh, ninety five uh, ninety eight and. Uh, those years uh, when uh, the Women's Special Entry Scheme uh, was launched. Uh, we've come a long way from there. It is 2021 now. And uh, General Arara, you know, the evolutionary path, which is being talked about in terms of, uh, you know, giving more opportunity to women in armed forces, uh, how do you view this journey from early 90s to now the 21st century, the second decade, uh, third decade, rather, we are looking at? Okay, Vishal, let me try and put it, let me try and put it in perspective. From the time in 1993, when the first women short service officer was commissioned, we have come a long way. It's not now a question of equality or what they can do, what they cannot do. We have a lot of water has flown under the bridge. We have traversed a long path and I'll let you know where we stand today. So, uh, ever since uh, the women officers started getting commission in the OTA, uh, Chennai, or now from Gaya as well, they trained for 11 months. They had uh, different criteria or eligibility criteria for joining different streams. By streams, I mean the various services and regiments. Mm -hmm. uh, there are the combat arms, the combat support arms, and the services. They're not allowed to join the combat arms, which are the infantry, the armored corps, the mechanized infantry, the artillery, and air defense. But they're allowed to join the combat support arms, which is the uh, signals, engineers, aviation, uh, air defense, sorry, air defense is okay. part of the combat support. Uh, and the services, the EME, ASC, Ordnance, Intelligence, Judge Advocate, General and Education branches. Uh, now I'm talking about other than medical, dental and the nursing corps. So uh, they were allowed to join as short service officers, serve for 10 years and then given four years extension. But there was no selection for permanent commission. Permanent commission was only in the medical and dental branches. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 2020, the Supreme Court, hearing a batch of petitions, allowed that they should be considered for permanent commission. And now they are being considered. Mm -hmm. Right now, the Army has almost 1,750 women officers. Uh, and out of them, 230 odd women are now in the permanent stream. Okay. Uh, that means they will retire at the same ages as men. They will, and the another thing is that they are now allowed to command their units in the stream that they are in. Okay. A few petitions are pending. I'm sure that decisions will be taken, but they will be in line with all that is happening. And now comes the decision that since women are now allowed to have permanent commission, uh, why should they just go to OTA with short service commission and then apply for permanent commission and then be considered and then get? They should be able to get direct permanent commission like men when they join the National Defense Academy. So Indeed. that ruling has also come uh, from the Supreme Court on 18th of August. The Ministry of Defense has informed the Supreme Court that they will be allowed to join NDA from May next year. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a huge. Uh, uh, leap and for, tell, in, for, indeed this is a very historic uh, leap you know not only huge very historic uh, decision yes, but but 
but please note that it will still be in the existing streams and not in the combat arms. And NDA means Army, Navy, and Air Force. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have proved themselves. So now expert groups and study groups are sitting down to formulate the medical standards for joining the NDA. So far, it was OTA and short service. The numbers are yet to be decided. Okay. The eligibility criteria and the physical standards will remain the same. Okay. At the, but what physical training curriculum they will have at NDA is to be decided. The logistics cover, the accommodation, the supporting infrastructure, that all will be taken care of once this expert group decides. Okay. Okay. So uh, now, uh, you know, I would like to say that we have taken the lead. It was only in 2015 and 2016 uh, that in the UK and in USA, similar steps were taken. Mm -hmm. Russia is a different uh, game altogether. Russia has had thousands and thousands of women soldiers at the officer rank even today okay. uh, in First World War, Second World War, and they have the largest number, hundreds of thousands of women officers who have fought, and even today, 40,000 women uh, soldiers, out of them, 4,000 officers are serving in their armed forces. But the uh, next hurdle to cross is combat arms, and that is the debate. Indeed, and, uh, and we'll, we'll come to that, General Arora. That next hurdle and those challenges there—that's that's very. I'm 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 leaving you at, at a very important uh, point there. Uh, we'll we'll come to that in the second round. But let me bring in Mayank here also. Mayank, uh, you know, you you've heard both General Arora and Captain Mishra as well. From your point of view, when we're talking about this evolution. Uh, there's been a lot of push in the past few years. You know, uh, indeed, uh, in fact, the la last few crucial uh, steps have been very important, uh, be it uh, the intervention of the Supreme Court or be it the decisions which have been taken by the government of the day. And we are almost at a level now when this evolution comes a full circle. You're right, actually. I mean, it has taken time. See, Army is a, is a very different organization and that has to be kept in mind whenever we talk of, uh, I mean, these inductions or... Uh, late inductions. Army is is concerned is an organization which is meant to to uh, find solutions for a crisis which might take place or or which might not take place. And that crisis is war actually. Directly concerned with the security of the nation. Also, another aspect is that is that it's a monolith. It takes time for things to change in a organization, and that is that comes down to to as low as introducing a new rifle in a unit. Mm -hmm. So things have to be kept into mind that whenever you are bringing a change, how will it affect? So the word evolution is very appropriate word which has been used. You are seeing that since 1992, the, uh, the first woman officers actually permanently who came into Army Medical Corps was in 1958. Mm -hmm. So understanding them, then lots of studies, 92, then came the change, 2015 directly, I mean, three women officers became the combat uh, fighter pilots. So this evolution is a very appropriate word. Understanding the, the kind of a society which army is actually. Army is a complete society in itself with a different psychology, with a different atmosphere, and that has to be handled well. Okay. So when you talk of society, it also impinges upon the kind of work which happens in the army. And that is a very right thing, which is like if your society in the, in the rural areas is changing, it is mark of that, that your army is also changing now. And just because... Uh, for the sake of crisis when your organization works, mm -hmm. predictability is very important. So that flow of order, flow of command, okay. it should not have even an iota of, of, of uh, ambiguity. Indeed. It was for that reason that you have done the evolution in a very studied manner. Indeed. That's why it is very important. And indeed, the armed forces are a different world altogether. Things happen in a different manner uh, other than, you know, if, if you compare it Absolutely. with uh, what happens in the civilian life, and that is why there is an order to it, uh, there is a process to it as well. Uh, Captain Mishra, you know, if you have to understand from a women officer's perspective, uh, and uh, I'd like to uh, take a cue from here, what General Laura was, uh, you know, uh, pointing to uh, uh, when he finished his first response. Uh, in terms of the challenges which we are looking at in this uh, evolutionary path, with, uh, with uh, you know, integration of women in the armed forces, uh, uh, yes, they have proved themselves. Yes, they have already been working in different corps uh, and they have proved their mettle. There are various uh, aspects which have been taken care of. Uh, 
But as Mayank is also pointing out, it's a different world, you know, and then things might change, but things might take a little longer to change. Yeah, so uh, I, uh, I would totally agree that army is a system by itself. And if you take the systems approach, I had been submitting in uh, my previous media engagements also, that when you bring about a change in a system, you cannot just, you know, inject one thing and, uh, uh, you know, assume that uh, rest of the system will work as business as usual. So if women officers or lady cadets are being inducted into the army, there should be, I mean, that's my submission, there should be workshops or sensitization uh, programs for fellow male officers or commanding officers or people with whom they work mm -hmm. so that they are, they have a general idea of what, uh, you know, uh, gender diversity is and what this uh, new change is happening so that they are also mentally prepared. So those, that's just uh, one uh, submission uh, I would uh, I would say which is there. But uh, as far as uh, what changes are taking place and what evolution are changing, uh, taking place, I will uh, bring everyone to the immediate uh, judgments uh, uh, which uh, we are hearing, uh, which is about uh, the, uh, you know, uh, changes being brought from the school level. The, the judgment uh, of Supreme Court, which has come about RIMC, the judgment of Supreme Court, which has come about, uh, uh, come about uh, RMC, which is uh, Rashtriya Indian uh, Military Colleges and Rashtriya... Indeed, and the decisions uh, taken with uh, the Senate schools as well. These are feeder institutions. These are these are feeder institutions, and uh, if you uh, continue to have uh, boys only to be studying in these uh, feeder feeder institution means children as young as studying in six classes they join the scenic schools or RAMC or uh, military uh, schools. So when children studying in six standard are joining and they study over a period of time till they come to twelfth, wherein they give exams for their National Defense Academy, right? So all the, uh, all, uh, the children at that young age should, uh, should have uh, the gender uh, parity as well. The girls should be given the opportunity to join these school, uh, schools as well. That judgment has come now in October 2021. So we are hoping that, that the implications of these judgment or implications of these uh, girls joining uh, uh, Sainic schools and RIMC and R RMC Will have will be seen uh, 10, 15 years from now when these girls will mature up and uh, you know grow up to give uh, okay. exams of NDA. Uh, 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 it, it was last year when uh, Senic School started inducting girls, and uh, I was talking to one of the principals of uh, Senic School, uh, who was in fact uh, Colonel uh, Smita Mishra was uh, in fact the member of the board who had recommended that the Senic School Senic Schools too should have girls, and she. Uh, has herself uh, made arrangements for 17 girls who had, you know, first batch of 17 girls of sixth standard who had joined as a scenic school. So the infrastructural uh, requirements, the pedagogy, minor changes in the pedagogy, the arrangements that need to be done. Indeed, uh, that, is, be uh, that is really, really important, uh, Captain Mishra, which you're pointing out about uh, the feeder institutions also playing a very important role. And it, it's, it's part of that evolution process uh, which we are discussing. Uh, Jal Arora, you know... Uh, Coming back to the challenges part, uh, which you were referring to in your first response, and obviously the challenges uh, will be there. How, what key challenges will be and how do you uh, believe uh, the institution here, uh, that is uh, uh, all three armed forces uh, and of course uh, the uh, Defence Ministry, we will have to go ahead and uh, tackle all those challenges. You know, as far as these feeder institutions go, the changes which are taking place, I doubt if they are as a result of a court order. The Ministry of Defence, under whom the Senate schools come, they have decided that uh, Senate schools will take... Yeah, uh, indeed. Senate schools' um, decision has been taken by the Ministry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, similarly, these things are... These changes are happening all over the country, all over the world. Uh, even Doon School has now said that they will take girls uh, in their school, which was an all-male bastion. <laughs> So these are changes which will keep occurring. There's no problem in that. Uh, if you talk about assimilation and uh, this evolution, there is a problem in one sphere, and that is the women are being taken only at the officer level. Only in the case of military police, 100 women soldiers uh, are being trained. They have been selected, recruited, and are being trained because it's a functional requirement to have women military police also, mm -hmm. in the rank, the BSF has taken uh, female soldiers, uh, but in the army, not yet. So, uh, as long as we have a vast pool of uh, male volunteers all over the country, and really vast, you know, there's never been a shortage 
and and there is acceptable acceptability amongst the stock that we are getting in the soldiers banks so females serving with them uh, this assimilation problem will take time at the officer level at the cadet level i don't think this is a problem at all okay the officers realize the potential of women officers they accept them i have had uh, even 12 years ago i have had women officers serving under me in my unit uh, there has never been a problem so uh, you know but the second part is the short service itself was started to make up shortages of an officer uh, of uh, officers in the in the army mm-hmm. and it became a kind of support card to have a short service male and female officers uh, and also provide better uh, career prospects to okay. permanent commissioned career officers now Indeed. that thinking has changed gladly that thinking has changed even short service women officers have the same opportunity now to progress in their career that is the uh, career part of it but then the functional part you know you can only have a certain number of women officers because the services the support services are limited uh, the numbers who are being selected i mean, mm-hmm. i have been a selector in the mm-hmm. uh, services selection board also let me tell you that the number of women candidates found fit for army uh, induction is far lesser for some reason uh, than the male officers so okay. i hope this will change when they start coming from sanic schools and rimc and other that institutions. is where the feeder institutions uh, significance of uh, their integration uh, becomes really important uh, and that's that's a very important aspect there you know brought about by general narada my your views there on these two parts one as general narada is pointing out in terms of assimilation you know uh, we will have to look at uh, uh, not only just uh, the uh, officer card uh, but we'll also have to look at uh, you know at the level of soldiers second part you know in terms of the feeder institutions we're talking about and i would want to ask you this because uh, you yourself are a product of uh, one of the sanic schools how do you think this change is going to manifest itself at the ground in these feeder institutions as well is that uh, this decision of taking ca- women uh, girl cadets into sanic school will make the uh, most important difference because see the first batch came in 2018 in in the uh, captain manoj pandey sanic school which is lucknow and those 15 girls the first girl she has become the adjutant of the school and all the armed forces people will understand what adjutant is actually she will be looking after the discipline of the complete school which is a very important school now next year when nda the first batch will give the exam for the nda she will also be part of that uh, giving exam mm-hmm. so it's coming full circle as you said now having said that all the sanic schools or rimc rashtriya military schools they have started inducting people they'll fructify in certain years but sanic school lucknow will be uh, by that time is already ready with the girl cadets and they'll be starting to join the uh, okay. institutions the other part assimilation is very important and i have to tell you an example 2008 i was traveling to tawang and in the brigade there was a single lady officer and let me tell you this lady officer was not very happy the way she was posted the only woman officer posted to that high altitude in the brigade is she so all these things are changing now with time more women officers will come the other thing is command let's say uh, as uh, general arora was saying at the lower level at the ranks it is also important assam rifles has done it bsf is doing it crpf has done it so gradually this thing also will change and uh, i am sure that uh, changes will come there also but okay. the other the, there is another aspect when you are inducting people when you are uh, inducting girls ladies into nda also are we going to say that are we going to layer the standards of indu- uh, induction it is the woman who should come first that we'll be uh, wanting to take the test at par in every difficulty in every sphere we would like to take everything every challenge at par with the men that is very important okay. because see as i uh, said in the beginning army is not a it's a not a general organization it's, it is meant for a uh, it is meant for a purpose which is crisis of the day indeed which might happen one day or which might not happen the day indeed that is very important so okay. there has to be no compromise on that aspect as far as standards of functioning standards of induction is concerned and there's no male or female okay indeed uh, the journey of evolution has been uh, really really interesting and wonderful there thank you so much uh, 
Captain uh, Mishra as well as uh, Major General Ravi Arora and uh, uh, Mayanka as well for sharing your views and insights uh, on uh, this very key aspect uh, that is uh, the role of women in armed forces and the evolutionary process, uh, as I was saying earlier, has been really interesting and uh, a lot of uh, you know, significant decisions which have been taken uh, recently to ensure uh, the assimilation of women in armed forces uh, and, of course, the feeder institutions do play an important and crucial role there. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.